Good evening, mathematicians. Tonight, we're going to be looking at two lessons. We're going to be looking at lesson 6.1 and 6.2. They're dealing with equivalent fractions. We're going to be starting on page 113 in your Go Math book. So on page 113 in your Go Math book, I want you to write down this essential question. How can you use models to show and generate equivalent fractions. Go ahead and write this down on page 113. Now, we need to think about what equivalent fractions are. So equivalent fractions are two or more fractions that name the same amount. So they might look different, but they're the same amount shaded in a fraction. So here we have an example. We have one third. We have our fraction bar and it's broken into three equal parts. We have one part shaded out of those three parts. Now we're looking at the same fraction bar, same length, same size, but this time it's broken up into six equal parts, and two of those parts are shaded, so we have two sixths. Now, as you can see, the shaded amount is equal. Even though the fractions are different, they still have the equal shaded parts. So we can say that one third is equivalent or equal to two sixths. Let's look at page 113, number two. We have a fraction, three fourths. Now, they have a model here that they want us to use to represent three-fourths. Well, I'm going to draw lines to help us see the fraction better. So I know that I'm gonna, going to need four equal parts. Well, here are my four equal parts. Now it's kind of hard to see with all the squares in the middle, but we have one, two, three, four equal parts, and three of those equal parts are shaded. So this is representing three-fourths. Now, we need to find an equivalent fraction using the model that is equal to three-fourths. Well, I'm going to go ahead and draw my same lines to show the three-fourths. But now, I'm going to draw a line down the middle of my model. And I've broken it up into smaller pieces. So now, instead of having four equal parts, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my fraction is going to be out of eighths because I have eight equal parts. Now I need to count how many parts are shaded. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means six out of eight parts are shaded. Now, the same amount is still shaded for my three-fourths. They have an equivalent amount shaded, which means that they are equivalent fractions. Now, I want to check my work and I want to see if these fractions are indeed equal. So I'm going to take my three-fourths and I'm going to write that it's equal to 6 eighths. And I'm going to use the cross multiplication method to see if these fractions are equal to check my work. Now I'm going to cross multiply and go up and say 8 times 3. Well, that gives me 24. Now I'm going to cross multiply the other way and go 4 times 6 and that gives me 24 also. So I got 24 when I multiplied, 
on both sides, which means that 3 fourths is equal to 6 eighths. Let's look at number 3. It says, tell whether the fractions are equivalent. Write equal or not equal. So we need to look at these two fractions, 8 tenths and 4 fifths, and we need to see if they are equal. Now, I'm going to use models to help me find this answer. My first model I'm going to show is 8 tenths. Now, I have a fraction model, and I broke it up into 10 equal parts, and that's for my 8 tenths. Now, since this is 8 tenths, I need to shade in 8 of those 10 equal parts to represent 8 tenths. I have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths. So this is 8 tenths shaded. Now I need to take the same fraction bar and break it up into fifths this time to represent my 4 fifths. Now here I have my fraction bar broken up into one, two, three, four, five equal parts. Now my job is to shade in four of those parts to show four fifths. So I have one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, and four fifths. Now looking at my eight tenths model, and my four fifths, we can see that the shaded amounts are equal to each other. So that means that eight tenths is equivalent to four fifths. So we can write the equal sign in between those two fractions. Now I want to check my answer using cross multiplication. I can multiply up and say five times eight, well that gives me 40. And cross multiply again, 10 times four, that gives me 40 as well. So eight tenths is equal to four fifths. All right, now I'm looking at number four. We have to tell if one half is equal or not equal to seven twelfths. Well, I have my fraction bar here, and it's broken up into two equal parts, representing halves. Now, I need to shade in one of those halves to represent one half, one out of two parts shaded. Now, I have my second model here, and it's broken up into 12 equal parts. Now I need to shade in seven of those to represent seven twelfths. I have one twelfths, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, and seven twelfths. Now friends, I know you can see that we have the 7 twelfths shaded. Now I want us to look at the shaded parts. Are they equal to each other? You're right, they are not equal. I can see that 7 twelfths is greater than 1 half. If I wanted to be equal to 1 half, I would have had to stop at the 6 twelfths. So 1 half is not equal to 7 twelfths. They are not equivalent to each other because 7 twelfths is greater. Now we can use cross multiplication to check. 12 times 1, well that gives me 12. 2 times 7, that gives me 14. And this is showing that indeed we are correct that 7 twelfths is greater than 1 half. 
All right, boys and girls, listen up. I need you to turn to page 115 in your Go Math books. We are now working on lesson 6.2 on page 115, so make sure you're there with me. Let's look at number two. It says, write two equivalent fractions for each. So now we're not going to tell if they're equal or not. Now we need to create an equivalent fraction for each of the fractions that they're given. Now we have two thirds here. If we are going to create or generate an equivalent fraction, all we need to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. We can pick any number to create a equivalent fraction, but it needs to be multiplied by the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to choose to multiply my numerator and denominator times the number two. So I'm going to say two times two and three times two. Well, two times two gives me a numerator of four. And three times two gives me a denominator of six. So two thirds are equal to four sixths. Now let's look at this using a model. Now I drew a model to show you that I have my same size fraction bar. This one is broken up into two thirds and shaded. This one is broken up into six equal parts and four are shaded. And you can see that they have equal shaded parts. So four sixths is equal to two thirds. Now I need to find another fraction that is equal for with two thirds because it says write two equivalent fractions. So now I have my two thirds, I'm going to rewrite it. And I can choose any number to multiply the numerator and denominator by, but it just has to be the same number. So I'm going to choose the number three. And I'm going to multiply the numerator times three and the denominator times three. Well, two times three is six. And three times three gives me nine. So that means that two thirds is equal to six ninths. Let's look at this using a model. All right, here I have my fraction bar cut into thirds. And then I have the same fraction bar now cut it into nine equal parts. So I need to shade for my two thirds. I'm going to shade in two out of the three parts for two thirds. And for six ninths, I'm going to shade in one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, and six ninths. So as we can see, they are the same shaded parts, which means that two thirds is also equal to six ninths and it's equal to four sixths. Okay, let's look at number three. Number three is the fraction one half. So we need to find two equivalent fractions for one half. So two fractions that are equal to one half. I can use multiplication to find this. I'm gonna multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same number and that will give me an equal fraction to one half. I'm going to choose the number four. We could choose two or three or four or five, any number really, but I'm just gonna choose the number four to find an equal fraction. So I'm going to say two times my denominator, which is four, two times four gives me eight, and one times four gives me four. Now remember, you always have to 
multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get the equivalent fraction. So what is equal to 1 half? Well, 4 eighths is equal to 1 half. That's one fraction. Now I'm going to find another fraction that's equal to 1 half. So I need to find another number to multiply by the 1 half. I'm going to choose the number 3. So I'm going to multiply my denominator and my numerator by the number 3. So 2 times 3 equals 6. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So I'm going to say 1 times 3 equals 3. So 1 half is equal to 3 sixths as well. Now if you notice my 1 half and my 4 eighths, is it 4 half of 8? Yes it is, so that means it's equal to 1 half. Let's look at the 3 sixths. Is it my numerator 3 half of the denominator 6? Yes, it is. So it's equal to 1 half. That's a little trick that you can remember when you're trying to find equivalent fractions for 1 half. All right, our homework tonight is on page 116. You are going to be doing numbers 1, 2, and also 3 through 6. So all the problems on page 116. When you get done with your homework, don't forget to assess yourselves. Have a good evening and we'll see you tomorrow in class. Bye.